What's the word, y'all? I'm recording this um, July 1st, bright and early in the morning. You could probably hear that in my voice. You'll probably see it in my face. But I didn't want to record this yesterday just in case something crazy happened overnight. Nothing did. Zion got an extension in the early mornings, and Ricky Rubio got a three-year contract with the Cavs. This is so great. Coming off a major injury, you, you don't really expect people to get a multi-year contract, but he played some of his best basketball of his career with the Cavs, and he helped them become one of the, the premier league pass teams last year, made them compete for a play off spot last year so I'm happy he's back with the Cavaliers but I will say day one of free agency absolutely mint I'm being honest the best name to go to a different team was Jalen Brunson and shout out to Kevin I guess because if it wasn't for Kevin requesting a trade I don't have anything to talk about today or you could look at it the other way where Kevin will question the trade is the reason why we haven't seen a lot of player movement because the other 29 GMs are getting on the phone and trying to figure out are they actually in the Kevin Durant sweepstakes and once they figure out that they're not then they go out there and spend some money so Kevin you are a blessing and a curse all right so this might be bias he's talking here but it feels like when I'm comparing 2021 free agency to 2022 free agency day one, 2021 is going crazy. It is killing 2022. And I say that might be biased because I'm a Chicago Bulls fan and the Bulls were one of the biggest buyers last year with DeMar DeRozan, Lonzo Ball, Alex Caruso all signed into the Bulls in a matter of a couple hours. Um, but like listen to the other names and the other things that happened in 2021. Chris Paul got an extension. They got a lot of people talking. Are you going to be paying this old man Chris Paul for four years? They will be. Jared Allen got a $100 million contract. Kyle Lowry left the, the Raptors to go to the Miami Heat. Norman Powell got a five-year contract with the Trailblazers. Like I mentioned, Lonzo Ball, Alice Caruso, DeMar DeRozan. Like, these are big-time things that happened in day one. And the best thing that happened yesterday was a bunch of extensions. Shout-out to the young guys that's getting their max extensions, super max extensions. Showing show them love from you. A lot of extensions. And Jalen Brunson. That's it. And then, like, backup players. Uh, Andre Drummond. Isaiah Hardenstein is a Nick, and I'm, I'm so jealous I'm so jealous. Shout out to iHeart, man. I wanted him in the Bulls jersey so bad. So shout out to the Knicks because they, they swooped him up for the low. But Bradley, Jokic, um, uh, Carthony Towns, John Morant, Zion, Anthony Simons. These are all people that signed a big extension. So shout out to them and their families because that is generational wealth. We talk about Jokic signing the biggest contract in NBA history. That's generational wealth. Uh, let me nip this in the bud right now. Uh, Jokic becoming the, getting the biggest contract in NBA history is not a surprise People are acting like this is a crazy thing. The NBA salary cap is going up every season. Now, it's not the crazy jump that we got when Kevin Durant signed with the Warriors, but still, it's going up every season. So, in, in two years, somebody else is going to sign a contract bigger than this. It's just the way it go. It feels like every year we see somebody signing the biggest contract in NBA history. It was it was Steph Curry signing the biggest extension in NBA history, and now it's Nikola Jokic. It's a lot of money in the game of basketball, and it continues to go up, so we're going to continue to see bigger contracts. Okay, cool. Let's talk about Kevin because that's the only thing that matters at this point other than Lou Dort signing the bag and uh, Bobby Portis re-signing. Like, again, it's just a lot of re-signing here. Oh, and Daryl Moore is getting the gang back together in Houston. That's another big storyline, a fun storyline. But everybody's thinking and talking about Kevin. A couple days ago, Kyrie Irvin opted into his contract to stay with the Brooklyn Nets, and he said, see you in the fall. Um, and I thought that was going to be at least the end of the Brooklyn Nets saga or rumors for at least a couple days. And it wasn't because Kevin went into the front office and went to the owner and said, I'm requesting a trade. And I'm thinking about Miami and I'm thinking about the Phoenix Suns. I love KD because he don't give a damn about what you call, you talk about his own his legacy, yada, yada, yada. This is another time where he is going to a different team and the top teams on his board are a team that basically won their conference, the best team in their conference. The Miami Heat were the one seed. The Suns were the one seed. The Warriors were the one seed. Kevin Durant don't care. He want to play with good players, and those are some of the best players. He say he want to play with Jimmy. He say he want to play with Devin Booker. So if the, the Miami Heat want to put together the package, it can't even include Bam on a bio anymore. And I'm seeing so many trades being drawn up, um, and my mentions are on, on the timeline. And I think people are really undervaluing Kevin Durant on a four-year contract. It, it is a bit iffy, though, because let's say you are one of the teams that Kevin Durant is not excited to go to. You got him on a contract of four years, which is great, but who says Kevin don't do this exact same thing in two years or next season once he can because he didn't want to be here in the first place. It's different than the Kawhi Leonard thing. Kawhi Leonard didn't want to play for the Raptors, but he only knew that he only had to be there for one season, and that season was successful. But Kevin, you trade him to a team that he don't want to go to, I don't know what happens. There's just so many different things to talk about, this Kevin Durant stuff, and I know I'm not going to cover it all. Let's just keep it 100% honest. The Brooklyn Nets 
were a failure. In just three years' time, they signed two max players, all-star, superstar caliber players, and Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving, and, and then they ended up getting James Harden, and they won one total playoff series. Kevin Durant, eventually James Harden, and Kyrie Irving were all on a same roster, and they won one playoff series, and this is about to be torn down. They gave up all the pick equity, all of the young players that they had, and Jared Allen and this player and this player, and they're about to go to a reset, rebuild, retooling, whatever you want to call it. Now, I do not believe that they're going to try to bottom out because they don't have a reason to bottom out because they gave up all of their picks in the James Harden trade. So they're not about to go do a DeJounte Murray type deal where you're getting only draft picks because they don't have a reason to be to be terrible. They're going to want, and at least this is what I think, a young up-and-coming star player plus draft capital. This is still Kevin Durant we're talking about. But again, like I mentioned earlier, it, let's say I'm just throwing out a team. This is not a rumor. This is not something that I think it would happen. Let's say the Pistons go all in and trade for Kevin. But Kevin don't want to play for the Pistons. Why? Even though Kevin Durant is Kevin Durant, he's one of the greatest players of all time. Why should I give up my entire future when we're not even sure Kevin will want to be here for longer than the season? So these are the type of things that's going on, and that's why it hasn't happened. I don't think the Brooklyn Nets should be rushing to make this deal happen. They have an entire offseason to figure out. I didn't expect Kevin to be traded in the first 24 hours of him requesting a trade because there is no rush. Either way, Bleach Report put together this article late last night. Trade packages and landing spots for star Kevin Durant since he's uh, requested a trade. The Miami Heat are one, but I, I don't think they even talk. Okay, so it's Kyle Lowry, Tyler Hero, Nikola Jovich, three first-round picks and three first-round pick swaps. This is what I'm talking about as far as pick equity. When you're talking Kevin Durant, it's going to be something like this. You're going to give us picks, and you're going to swap picks out for us, my guy. But I don't know if they believe that Tyler Hero is the type of guy that we want to give a bunch of money to. Cal Lowry is good, and Nikola Jovich is, is the 28th overall pick in this year's draft, whatever he, he was. Phoenix Suns make is interesting because if another team just throws an offer sheet to DeAndre Aiden, it completely tears up anything that the Phoenix Suns could potentially do. DeAndre Aiden, Mikel Bridges, three future first-round picks and two swaps. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. I know there's some Phoenix Suns fans out there like, oh, my God, that's a lot. Remember, we are still talking about Kevin Durant, and just based off pure talent, I don't know if this is a lot. You know what I'm saying? Of course, there's baggage that comes along with, as you know. You know, Kevin has been on a couple different teams, and it seems like every time he leaves a different team, there's some type of some type of falling out in one way or another. Um, so there is some things that come along with it. But if your goal at the end of the day, and it, it is the goal for all 30 NBA organizations, is to win a championship, Kevin can help you do that as a hired gun. And we saw that for two out of three seasons with the Warriors. The Memphis Grizzlies. Ooh. Um, Jaron Jackson Jr., Zaire Williams, and four first-round picks. Eh, this package up here looks a little bit better than this package right here. I'll say that. The Toronto Raptors. Can the Toronto Raptors do it again? Last time they traded for a superstar player, it was an absolute steal. They gave up an all-star and a future player at, what, one pick? This is going to cost you a little bit more than what it cost you to get Kawhi Leonard. Let's see what they're saying. OG, Gary Trent. Four future first-round picks and three swaps. That's seven years of pick equity for four years of Kevin Durant. Sheesh. And then the Trailblazers. Um, how is that? Anthony Simons, who just resigned, so I don't know if this is, I don't know. Sharp, Josh Hart, three future first-round picks and three swaps. What I'm figuring out is that nobody really knows what the package could look like for Kevin Durant. Bobby March is talking about it's going to be the biggest trade package in NBA history. Um, which, which is very interesting. But I want to go back to talk about the, the Brooklyn Nets as a whole being a failure because, like I said, you had all these players only won one playoff series, and that's because of injury, that's because of vaccinations, that's overall because of just people being out of the lineup, that's uh, turmoil within the locker room, teammates not getting along. And, and me and the guys are talking, and I'm praying that other teams are seeing what's going on and realizing that the super team era should be over. The orchestrated super team era should be over. We got money for two max spots. Let's go get two superstar players. That has not worked out to the to the to the way that a lot of people anticipated. Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, and James Harden were were the championship favorites. Like two of the three years that they were together. And again, one playoff series win. 
it is crazy to say aloud. And now, with me being 25 years old, I'm looking back on those Miami Heatles, one of the original super teams, if you're going to call it that. And the fact that they got two championships seems like a huge success now. And the moment, we're like, oh, man, this is a failure. You got LeBron, you got Wade, you got Boston. You only won two out of four. When you look at the, all these super teams that, that came after that, two out of four, the Brooklyn Nets will be, be super happy with two out of four. You know what I'm saying? And I'm talking about the orchestrated super teams. I'm not I, I do consider the when when um Kevin Durant went to the Warriors, I consider that a super team. But in the heart of that is homegrown with Steph, with Dre, with Clay, right? In the heart of that, it is homegrown. I'm talking about the super teams that seem like we're gonna make a trade here to get a star, we're gonna sign a player here to get a star, and boom, now we just throwing the balls out there and, and these guys who've never played uh, any minutes together are going to do it. I'm talking about the era where we got three max players and the rest are minimum players. That is dead, or at least it should be, because these guys gave up all the pick equity in the world. They traded away all the young players that they had for the opportunity to bring in these three players. I'm, I'm looking at the front office over there, and I'm thinking about, like, who has the leverage here? You would think that the front office of the Brooklyn Nets will have the leverage because, well, Kevin Durant has four years on his contract, so who gives a damn about what he wants? We're going to do what's best for our organization. But you also got to think about it from the player empowerment era that we're in. If, if the Brooklyn Nets trade Kevin Durant to the dead last team on his board of teams, that's going to set them back as an organization when it comes to the future, when it comes to these other players that might be interested in join, joining the Brooklyn Nets. Because I saw when Kevin decided that he didn't want to play here no more, they did him dirty. And again, I know it don't make sense because before that, they gave Kevin everything he wanted. He wanted Reed, we got you, Reed. You want James, we got you, James. You want to start DeAndre Jordan, we have fire you a goddamn coach because DeAndre Jordan is your guy. But all of that goes away if you trade Kevin to one of the teams that he absolutely despised. And I know it makes no sense, but that's just the way the NBA is. So we see the Brooklyn Nets two times in the last 10 years bottom out at the sniff to bring in some really good players. Trade everything for a sniff to be in the conference finals to get a championship appearance, and every single time it has failed. How many championship appearances did, did, did KG and Paul Pearson, Darren Williams get? How many championship appearances did we get from KD, Kyrie, and James? It has failed over and over and over. I would never do this again if I'm a general manager. I'm going to try to do my, my stuff through the draft, do my due diligence through the draft, and, and then try to build a team that way. And if we're one piece away, then I'll give up everything to get Drew Holiday. If we're one piece away, I'll give up everything to get this. But bottoming out to, to, to like, last year, two weeks ago even, I was saying, that if I was a general manager and I had the opportunity to get KD and Kyrie, I'm doing a no-brainer. And now I have decided it's not a no-brainer anymore. It's just not. It's not a no-brainer anymore. In that moment, if I'm Sean Marks, 100% I'm doing it. In that moment, if I see that James Harden wants to come to my team, 100% I'm doing it. But in hindsight, it's 2020. Yes, for sure. Hindsight is 2020. I'm not doing it. And that could be James, that could be Kyrie, that could be KD, that could be Shea, that could be John ja Morant, that could be Zion. It could be any two collections of superstar players. I don't know if I do it anymore because it doesn't seem like it has been working. I don't Porter just signed with the Toronto Raptors. Hey, Toronto got um, that is young back and now they got Otto Porter. They're getting the, the Windy City Bulls together. Wow. Um, yeah, man, I, I'm just curious. I don't believe that we're going to get a Kevin Durant trade anytime soon. And when I say soon, I mean like today or tomorrow. I guess it definitely is a possibility. Um, but, you know, I don't I don't think it's going to happen. I don't see why they would rush it unless, unless there's one team that's giving everything. Four, three picks, four pick swaps, a young up-and-coming player, plus this, plus that. And then you do it if it's a no-brainer. Um, but I just don't. I don't see it happening anytime soon. The Miami Heat, again, one of the teams that KD wants to go to, their package doesn't look as look as enticing as some of the other teams that can put it together. The Phoenix Suns has a good package if they're willing to give that. James Johnson said recently in a presser, they don't give a damn about draft picks anyway. They said that. He said that. They don't care about draft picks. They don't even be doing scouting like that. That's, what he, that's how you get Jalen Smith instead of Tyrese Halliburton. That's how you get Jalen Smith instead of whoever. They don't give a damn about the draft. So why not trade all the picks away anyway? What you got to lose? Jalen? I mean, I said Jalen. Oh, my God. Um, James Johnson? Because if this don't work, you're probably getting fired anyway. And then those picks that you gave up for 2029, 
not really your problem anymore, right? Sean Marks, job security, probably in the tank. Even though he did what a lot of us considered to be a no-brainer, it turned out it wasn't. So if Sean Marks has a job at the end of this offseason or next year, wow, that's a, that's a lot of loyalty. It's a lot of loyalty. I mean, he showed before him that he was really good um, with the Jared Allen era or the, um, the D'Angelo Russell era. Team is really fun. Uh, I think that's where I wrap up. I don't have anything else to say. Um, I don't know. You might be getting multiple videos in a day, depending on how things go. Like if I publish this video, Kevin Durant gets traded to two hours, there will be another video. Um, but either way, I, let me know what you think about free agency so far. Kevin Durant situation, I'll be down now.